Now we're going to go through a number of examples where we calculate the derivatives of some functions, starting from the definition. To start, let's consider the function f of x defined by 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. And let's say we want to find f prime of 2. By definition, f prime of 2 is a limit as x is approaching 2 of the difference quotient f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2. If we substitute for f of x and f of 2 their values, yes, 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 is just what stands for f of x, and 15 is what we obtain by plugging x equal to in the function, in other words this is f of 2. Then after simplification we obtain that f prime of 2 is a limit at 2 of 3x squared plus 2x minus 16 over x minus 2. Here we should expect that if we plug x equal to in this we get 0 at the top and 0 at the bottom. Indeed at the top we have 3 times 4 12 plus 4 16 minus 16 0. This is expected because this is nothing but f of x minus f of 2 and of course it should be 0 when x is 2. But what that means is that out of this polynomial, which is 0 at 2, I can factor the factor x minus 2. So factoring out x minus 2, we obtain as a second factor 3x plus 8. And after cancelling the common factor x minus 2, we obtain the limit at x equal 2 of 3x plus 8. But now this is just a polynomial, so to obtain this limit we can just plug x equal 2 and we obtain 8 plus 6, 14. In other words, f prime of 2 is 14. Now if the question was find the tangent line to the graph of this function at x equal 2, we would have done pretty much all the work. This tangent line is the line of slope f prime of 2, which we just calculated, through the point of first coordinate 2 and second, second coordinate f of 2. So all we need here is f of 2. So we plug x equal to in the function and we obtain 15. In other words, the tangent line is the line of slope 14 through the point of coordinates 2, 15. And this line has equation y minus 15 equal 14 multiplied by x minus 2. What if instead we needed several tangent lines? For instance at x equal 2 but also at x equal 0, x equal negative 1, x equal 1 and x equal 3. Of course we don't want to have to repeat the same calculation over and over again. So in that case we're going to calculate f prime of x as a function of x and once we have this function we will plug in the various values of x that we need. By definition f prime is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. We substitute for f of x plus h and for f of x their values. So in other words I replace x by x plus h in the expression of f in order to obtain f of x plus h and I just keep 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 for f of x. If I multiply things through, x plus h squared gives me x squared plus 2xh plus h squared so when I multiply by 3 I get 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared and then 2 multiplied by x plus h gives me 2x plus 2h and for the rest I just distribute the negative sign. You see that the terms in x square cancel out, the terms in x cancel out and the constant term cancel out. In what remains, each term contains an h, in other words I can factor out h. This is of course again to be expected because as a polynomial of the variable h, the expression is 0 when h is equal to 0, because f of x plus h minus f of x is of course 0 if h is 0. 
So if I have a polynomial in H that takes a value 0 at H equals 0, it means H can be factored out. And this is what we do. And after cancelling the common factor H, we obtain the limit when H is approaching 0 of 6x plus 3h plus 2. Now this is just a polynomial in H, so to obtain the limit, we plug in H equals 0, and we obtain 6x plus 2. In other words, as a function of x, f prime of x is 6x plus 2. Now if we go back to the problem of finding these different tangent lines, we have on the left hand side in the leftmost column the values of x that we are interested in, then we have a column for the values of f prime, one for the value of f, and then for the equation of the tangent line. If x is negative 1, f prime of x, when I plug negative 1, I get negative 6 plus 2, negative 4. If I plug x equal negative 1 in f, I get 3 minus 2 minus 1, so 0. In other words, the equation of the tangent line at x equal negative 1 is a line of slope negative 4 going through the point of coordinate negative 1, 0. It has therefore equation y equal negative 4 multiplied by x plus 1. x minus minus 1 and therefore x plus 1. Similarly, when we plug x equals 0 in f prime and f, we find 2 and negative 1 respectively. And therefore, the equation of the tangent line is y plus 1 equal 2 multiplied by x minus 0, in other words, 2x. At x equal 1, we obtain 8 for f prime and 4 for f, and therefore the equation of the tangent line is y minus 4 is 8x minus 1. At x equal 2, we obtain the uh, equation of the tangent line we just established in the previous slide, and at x equals 3, we find a slope of 20 and a y-coordinate for the point of tangency of 32, and therefore the equation of the tangent line is y minus 32 equal 20 multiplied by x minus 3. Now to give another example, let's consider the function square root of 2x plus 3, and we want to find its derivative function. Once again, we start from the definition. f prime of x is the limit as h is approaching 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Again, we just substitute for f of x plus h and for f of x their expression. We have the expression for f of x, root of 2x plus 3. For f of x plus h, we just substitute x plus h for x in that expression. Now, if we plug h equals 0 in this expression, we get 0 at the top and 0 at the bottom. In other words, an undetermined form. We have seen when we were studying limits that when we have this kind of 0 over 0 indetermination and we have radicals, uh, typically we try to get rid of the radicals and of the indetermination by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate quantity. In this case, the conjugate quantity would be root of 2 times x plus h plus 3 plus root of 2x plus 3. So this is what we do here. And we obtain uh, this relatively uh, big formula. But at the top, uh, what we have is something of the form a minus b multiplied by a plus b. So it simplifies as a difference of the squares. The square of a square root is simply what we have under the square root, and therefore at the top we simply have 2 multiplied by x plus h plus 3 for the square of the first root, minus 2x plus 3 for the square of the second root. The bottom is unchanged. If we simplify the top, we have 2x minus 2x, the x's disappear. We have 2h, and then 3 minus 3. So what remains is 2h over h multiplied by the conjugate quantity. We have the common factor h, as expected, that appears at the top and the bottom, and it can be simplified so that we obtain 
the limit of this expression, but when h is approaching 0, now the expression is well defined if we just plug h equals 0. Plugging h equals 0, we obtain at the bottom root of 2x plus 3 plus root of 2x plus 3. In other words, 2 over 2 square root of 2x plus 3. Simplifying the 2, we obtain that f prime of x is 1 over root of 2x plus 3. Now again, if we were asked to find the tangent line to the graph of that function at, say, x equals 3, the interpretation is that the tangent line is a line of slope f prime of 3 that goes through the point of coordinate 3, f of 3. Here we have the function f and the function f prime, so we just plug x equals 3 in these two functions. f prime of 3 is 1 third, and f of 3 is 3. So now we have the line of slope 1 third through the point of coordinate 3, 3. And therefore, the tangent line has equation y minus 3 equal 1 third of x minus 3.